so now we're going to create the schema or the structure of the back end so if i close the front end folder and in my back end i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to name it db to do's.js so this will be the structure or the schema as they call it of what i'm going to pass in my to do's so what i need to make the connection is mongoose or so const mongoose which is equal to require mongoose so and I'm going to create a constant of to do schema. So const to do schema, which is equal to mongoose.schema. So, and in here, I'm going to have a couple of objects. So within the object, sorry, I'm going to have an object called text. So this is going to be the text that we create on the input. So whatever is in here, we want to pass into the database. So the text is going to have a type of string. So this will be a text, a string always. And we will also need this to be required. So required as true, put that in there. And what we're going to do is just copy this. Instead of text, I'm going to have a Boolean value of completed. So has the to do been completed? So this will be a Boolean of true. So we'll have just two objects in the schema. So the text and completed. And just finally, we also want to have timestamps in there so that we can order it or sort it by the date. So an object again of timestamp with an S of true, but this will add to the database also. So now we have created the to do schema. We now also need to export it. So normally we would do the export default, but because it is in Node.js and an older backend environment, we are going to do it the older way. So module dot export, which is equal to mongoose dot model. And I'm going to name this model to do as the first argument. And then the second argument is the model we're going to pass across, which is the to do schema like so. So now if I save, we have that set up. So what I also am going to do is create a controller. So this will handle all of the API endpoints as the second argument. So now that I have created my to do schema, I am now going to create all the CRUD methods using this schema. So I'm going to create a new folder in the back end. This will be called controllers, controllers like so. And within controllers, I'm going to create a new file named to do controller js so now if i go into my server js file i now want to create my endpoint so first endpoint will be get to do's list i will have also the create a new to do we will also have the update a to do and just finally we will have delete a to do like so so in here the first one is going to be app get and the endpoint that we want to get is slash to do's like so and then in my controller file the second argument is normally a callback function which we will create in the controller file just to make the server js file lightweight and neat so what i will call this callback function is get to do's like so and we will import this um, from the control to do controller js file so if I just copy this and paste this in each time, so instead of app.get this time, so to create a new to-do, we will do app.post and we will post the to-dos to the slash to-dos endpoint. And the callback argument will be create to-do with one S like so. We also want to update an individual and delete an individual to-do so the endpoints will be slash colon id so the we want to essentially get the id that we click on and we want to delete that from the entire to do's list so this will be app dot put and i'm going to name this one update to do with singular to do and the same with this one will be app dot delete which will also be named delete to do like so so at the top after the .env config, I also want to import these methods. So if I import these, which is equal to require of 
dot slash controllers slash to do controller js so essentially we're going to export these methods here from the to do controller js and import them into the api endpoints as a callback function so i'm just going to copy these across so get to do's create to do update to do and finally delete to do so now we have the server js file complete all we need to do now is create these callback functions in the to do controller and then that will be the back end portion of the app complete so if i go into to do controller.js and in here we need two packages so we need mongoose once again mongoose equals require mongoose and we also need the schema that we created so const to do is i'm going to name this one which is equal to require of the dot slash sorry go up a level into db to do's so now we have access to the schema portion i'm just going to paste in the names of what we are going to create here and whilst we're at it i'm going to export these so module dot export is equal to an object which will take in the following functions and now we just need to create the function so first off the callback function that i want to create is get the to do's list to do's list so i'm going to name this const of get to do's which is what we named it in this file and the server js file so i want to get the to do's so i'm going to give it an async function so in this function you get a request and a response and i'm going to give it a callback and within the async function i'm going to give it a try catch block so a try and then a catch like so and what i want to do is create the to do's so const all to do's or get the all all of the to do's which is equal to await to do's dot find so this is a method from mongodb to find all of the all of the to do's so await to do's dot find which is equal to an empty object so find all of the to do's and we also want to sort these with the newest going to the top so sort and in here i'm going to get an object so within the to do schema so if i go into here where we have selected time stamps stamps of true what gets added onto here is something called created app and we want to get the created app as minus one so that the new to do's are there always at the top so now that we have the to do's all to do's declared i want to get a res dot status of 200 res dot status of 200 which means it's a success dot send and what we want to send is all of the to do's so that way we have access to all of the to do's and in the catch block i forgot to put the error in so when we have an error essentially what we want to do is the same thing but instead we give it a 400 error and we want to pass in the error dot message so now if i save and now have the get to do list set up so now we can access the get to do's we just need to copy this and underneath paste but in but this time we want to create a new to do and the method is going to be called create to do we get a request and a response once again so now we want to get the to do that we are passing across so const db to do so within the request we get access to the body so we want to pass in the new to do into the database so within the try catch block i'm going to name this one new to do which is equal to await to do's dot create and in here i'm going to pass in the db to do so so essentially we are creating whatever gets passed in from request.body into the new to do and then what we are again going to do is pass in a two or one this time to say we have successfully created a new to do and for the error i'm just going to change this to a 500 error 
so that we have got a to-do and created a to-do also. So now all that's left is to create the update to-do and the delete to-do. So I'm just going to, I can copy this, but the update and delete are slightly different. So I'm just going to change this to update uh, to-do and I'm going to give it a constant of update to-do like so. But to find the right to do, we need to get access to the individual ID that we click on. So on here, we're going to get access to the params object within request. So request.params.id, but I'm just going to destructure the ID from request.params. So within the request params, we're going to get the ID that get passed in. So if we go back into our server, we get an ID parameter here within the request.params. So this ID within the try block, I'm going to check first of all, if it is a valid ID. So an if, and then this is where we have access to mongoose or types dot object, object ID, oops, dot is valid. So basically what this does is it checks if the destructured ID is valid. So what we want to do is check if it's not valid. So just give it an exclamation mark beforehand. If it's not valid, then we want to return a response dot status of 404 dot send. So we want to send the response of 404 and this will say uh, there is no to do with to do with the ID of and then just pass in the ID here and give this some template literal backticks. Okay, and then just fix this and just give close it off here. And if that check passes, then we want to update the to do. So what I want to do is essentially check the ID is valid like so. Okay, and then once the ID is valid, we want to get access to the to do ID. So to do ID, which is equal to underscore ID of ID. So the underscore ID is from MongoDB. That's how they name their IDs. So that's the structure it always is for each individual um, ID that we have. And then the ID that we have is going to be equal to the rec.params.id here. So once we find that we want to update, so const update is equal to, if we look into our DB to do's, we want completed to become true. Initially it will be false because we haven't completed the to do. So we want to access the completed key here and we want to now set that to true. So now we have declared both variables that we need. I want to change this to these both to update to do like so and instead of to do's dot create we want to do to do's dot find find one and update which is this method here and what we want to pass in as the first argument is the to do id so we want to find the to do id from the params object and then the the payload that we want to update with is the update. So we want to toggle complete to true, like so. Then what we want to do is do an extra check. So if there isn't an update to do, then we want to return the same check here as well. So res.status of 404, no such, there's no to do with the ID of the ID. Otherwise, we want to send res.status of 200 like so i'm again passing in the update to do and just finally the last method is the delete to do so if i change the update to actually all of them to delete let's do it one by one so delete to do and that's a lowercase d again we are getting access to the id um, from the params we are going to check if this is a valid ID, I don't need the updates. We don't need these anymore. So if we just delete them 
and we want to declare a delete to do. So instead of find by find one and update, this will be find one and delete. Like so, and the one that we want to find and delete is within the object of underscore ID equal to the ID that we pass. So that's what we want to delete. And we don't need the if check here. We just need to pass in the deleted to do as a 200 um, status here. And then we've passed in the deleted to do. So now if we save all, we have the back end all set up and complete. So we have the schema set up. We have the server JS file, which has the API endpoint set up. And we have the connection to the MongoDB database with Mongoose. And we have set it, everything up as we need. What we now need to do is on the front end, make API requests to the local host of 8,000 and build out the rest of the front end.